Hi guys, here we will be discussing on the topic class A power amplifier that too with RC coupled. Whenever I am talking about RC coupled class A power amplifier, in the classification of power amplifier only we have studied that what is class A amplifier. In brief, class A amplifier will give you the coincident point that is operating point on exactly midpoint of the VCC power supply. So let's discuss mathematically, let's analysis of this class A power amplifier. Let's analyze this class A power amplifier in detail. On your screen, you have this particular circuit, which is very much familiar to you all. This circuit is nothing but the fixed bias circuit. And whenever I'm talking about fixed bias circuit, this Q1 is not BJT uh, BC547A. It's a power amplifier so it has a separate configuration separate ratings than that of your bjt 547a or 547b that is usual for voltage amplifier but here we are do doing for power amplification so we are using power bjt's so this is nothing but the power bjt's and with this transistor we are forming an amplifier that is nothing but class a power amplifier with rc coupled let's analyze this the with the waveform and dc load line as usual we have studied with the q point in the dc load line DC analysis only. So whenever I am talking about DC analysis, I am taking this particular capacitor open because in DC frequency is equal to 0 and XC is equal to infinite. Infinite means open circuit. So that's why input VI has nothing to do with this particular circuit. So I have to do the DC analysis first. When DC analysis comes into picture, I have to draw the DC load line. So in this particular waveform, I am trying to give you the information regarding the class A amplifier features. So let's see Q point is exactly in the middle of the VCC and 0 and exactly I max and I min. In this particular case I am saying that if Q point is exactly midpoint then I will get full swing. Full swing means I am starting from 0, I am reaching towards T by 2 where I will get the half cycle and next half cycle I will be, be getting towards the negative side and that too with complete swing. I am not getting clipping anywhere. So I can say that in the current waveform as well as voltage waveform I am getting full swing. So this indicates that my conduction angle is 360 degrees not less than 360 degrees. That is one of the biggest advantage of class A power amplifier. Let's do the analysis mathematically. Now what we will have to do, we will have to take this particular circuit. We will have to take this particular circuit and we have to form KVL on the input side as well as output side as we have done with BJT voltage amplifier. If I am applying KVL at the input side, I am getting the equation minus IBRB minus VBE plus VCC is equal to 0. So from that, I will get one parameter of the Q point that is nothing but IBQ. So IBQ is nothing but VCC minus VBE divided by RB. Once we get the value of IBQ, we have the voltage rating of uh, HFE uh, beta from that particular transistor, power transistor. So from that, I'll get the value of beta and when I'm multiplying this beta with IBQ, I'll get the value of ICQ. That is one of the parameter of Q point. So I have got the first parameter of the Q point. Let's calculate the second parameter of the Q point by applying KVL at the output side. If I'm doing the KVL at the output side, I will be getting plus VCC minus ICQ into RL minus VCE is equal to 0. We will apply this logic and then I will say that I want to draw DC load line for the output characteristics, right? So here in this particular waveform, I am getting these are nothing but the output characteristics of transistor. As I am doing the output characteristics of the trans transistor, so I have to deal with the output KVL of the circuit. So if I'm doing that, then I will get the DC load line that is nothing but the variation of the current and voltage with respect to each other when I'm talking about DC analysis. So this is this variation is represented by DC load line. So how can I form that DC load line? This DC load line is basically the line with the variation of the current and voltage rather output voltage and output current VCE and IC respectively. VCC minus ICRL minus VCE is equal to 0. Now we have to form the DC load line. 
for DC load line, we have to take one particular point on x axis, one particular point on y axis. If I am talking about one particular point on x axis, then I will say that on x axis y component is equal to 0. If IC is equal to 0, VCC is equal to VEE, right? So I will get one particular point on the DC load line exactly on the x axis, that is nothing but VCC comma 0. So the value of VCE is equal to VCC and the value of current IC is equal to 0. Similarly, we will form another point on the y axis and I will say that on the y axis x component is equal to 0. So, VCE is equal to 0. If I put the value of VCE is equal to 0 in this particular equation, you will find that IC is equal to VCC divided by RL and this is the value of IC max I will be getting on the DC load line. So, this is the range with which my uh, voltage swing, current swing will move from reference point to maximum point, maximum point to minimum point, minimum to again the reference point. So this is how the variation of the AC, AC waveform on the basis of DC load line. So I have got the two points. Now I will say that when I am drawing the DC load line, I will just join point A and point B. And wherever it intersect at this particular output characteristics of the transistor and that point will nothing but Q point of the transistor. Once we say that this Q point is coming near to the midpoint of the VCC and IC max, then I can say that yes, I have got the correct answer that class A amplifier is giving Q point rather twin cent point exactly near to the middle of VCC, right? So let's move ahead how to do the analysis as far as power amplification fundamentals are considered. Here we have to say that what is exactly VCE max and what is exactly IC max in ideal condition. So when I'm saying that VCEQ is equal to VCC divided by 2 that is nothing but the midpoint in the ideal condition and ICQ is nothing but IC max divided by 2 but IC max is nothing but VCC divided by RL. So, VCC divided by RL divided by 2 is nothing but VCC divided by 2 RL. So, ideally for class A power amplifier, I am getting this particular Q point values in the terms of VCC that is DC supply voltage and the load resistance that is RL. Now, well, we will discuss about the how much power is exactly getting transferred from the input AC signal towards the output side that is output load that is low resistive load. Let's discuss about the PAC that is nothing but the output power that is output AC power coming at the output side that is nothing but the collector side. Here I am talking about the output is taken at the collector side at this particular point. If I am talking about at this particular point I will get the output then I will say I will first draw the AC equivalent circuit where this is representation of the transistor that is power transistor same as the uh, transistor will form a model but the values will be different. Here HFE values will be less than that of your BJT 547A or 547B. RL, RL is having low value, low resistive load. Then RB, RB is input resistance and HIE is in dynamic input resistance of your BJT that is power BJT. Now on the basis of that we will first form what is exactly power output power but output AC power generated at the output side. I will say that whenever I am talking about the AC signal, I will consider the RMS value. So general representation of power is nothing but voltage square divided by resistance. So here I am talking about AC, that is why I am talking about output power, output voltage square but in the form of RMS. I will consider output power is equal to output voltage in the form of RMS ka square divided by RL. But what is RMS value of the voltage? RMS is nothing but the peak value divided by root 2. Okay. So peak value divided by root 2 the whole square divided by RL. Right. Now what is VO peak? VO peak is nothing but half of peak to peak value. Right. Now you are getting that what is exactly peak to peak value? I will point that first point here I am getting right and second point here I am getting. In between this particular range, I am getting the swing. Similarly, in this particular range, I am getting the swing. I am talking about voltage, that is why I am so saying that this is nothing but the peak to peak voltage. So, peak to peak voltage is nothing but 
twice of VO peak. So in general, I can say that this is nothing but VO peak and this is nothing but VO peak to peak. VO peak to peak divided by 2 is nothing but VO peak. So I'll just put the value of VO peak is equal to VO peak to peak divided by 2 root 2 will be as it is and uska square and that will give you the answer VO peak to peak ka square divided by 8 RL and this is nothing but your output AC power. Now output AC power I can write in another form as well because VO peak to peak is nothing but VO max minus VO min the whole square. I will write in the form of V max minus V min the whole square divided by 8 RL. I have another formulas for power as well, right? Current square multiplied by RL. I have current multiplied by voltage. So in that form, I have written the output AC power ka formulas. Now, when I'm talking about ideal conditions, that is when I'm get getting the successfully 360 degree conduction angle, more than that, I don't require any guard band. It means that when I'm talking about this particular waveform, this particular point that is VCC is nothing but the maximum point, peak point, right? And zero value is nothing but the minimum point, right? It's an ideal condition. Practically, it is not possible because of distortion. I'm, say, I'm keeping guard band for safer side. Guard band means I'm saying that my minimum value should be near to zero, but not exactly zero, more than zero. And my max value should be less than VCC, not more than VCC or equal to VCC. It should be less than VCC for practical condition. But for ideal condition, I will get the maximum conduction angle and that <coughs> we will be getting by putting the value V max is equal to VCC volts and V min is equal to zero volts. In the similar condition, I will be getting I max is equal to twice of ICQ where ICQ is nothing but VCC divided by two RL and that will give you the value VCC divided by RL and I min is equal to zero. This is all about the ideal situation, practical situation, practical scenario in the numerical can be different, okay? So now we will say about the power at output side, AC power at the output side is nothing but VCC square divided by 8 RL. What will have to do? We will just have to put these values V max V min, I max I min in this particular equation or else otherwise only V max V min in this particular equation or else otherwise only I max I min in this particular equation, you will get the exact value same as that of VCC square divided by 8 RL. I will point this particular POAC that is output AC power with equation number 1. So whatever output AC power ideally maximum output AC power whatever I am getting that is nothing but VCC square divided by 8 RL right. Now whatever we have to discuss is nothing but in the form of efficiency of power amplifier. To get the efficiency in the first video itself we have learned that what is efficiency? Efficiency is nothing but how much power I am getting and how much DC power supply I am inputting right. So out of the input power supply, DC input power supply, how much AC output power I am getting that gives you the mathematical representation of efficiency. So for that first parameter you have calculated that is nothing but PAC is equal to VCC square divided by 8 RL. Now we have to discuss about what is PDC that is how much DC power supply I have given. So let's discuss about DC power supply. So input DC power, what is input DC power? Input DC power is nothing but how much current is flowing through the circuit, right? How much current is flowing through the circuit at the output side? That is nothing but ICQ, right? So that ICQ is multiplied with the power supply voltage that is VCC. So if I multiply both of them, I will get the power that is in the form of input DC power. So I will just multiply VCC with ICQ and I know that what is ICQ? ICQ is nothing but VCC divided by 2 RL. That is nothing but IC max divided by 2. So in ideal condition. So again VCC into VCC divided by 2 RL. That is nothing but VCC square divided by 2 RL. Right? So I will be getting the PDC very easily that have value VCC square divided by 2 RL. Now our formula of efficiency says that output AC power divided by input DC power that is nothing but PAC divided by PDC as per as our notation. 
right so i will say that from equation number 1 and 2 i will be getting the maximum efficiency which is coming out ideally is 25% which is very very less what does it means if i am giving if pdc is equal to 1 watt i am giving 1 watt power at the supply out of which in the ac output ac power i will be getting only 0.25 watt right so other value of power where that that other power is going that is nothing but the power dissipation okay so what is power dissipation i can say that now what is power dissipation maximum power dissipation i have to calculate right so maximum power dissipation is nothing but what's the value of vceq and what's the value of icq okay so this power dissipation is occurred due to transistor right this transistor is eating some amount of power and giving some amount of power so given power is nothing but the output ac power and the eated output power is nothing but the power dissipation so i can say that vceq into icq is nothing but the pq max q for q for power bjt right so vcc square divided by 4 rl is the final ideal value for maximum power dissipation per transistor here i am using only one single transistor so the maximum power dissipation for the circuit and the maximum power dissipation per transistor is equal for this particular circuit there are kind of circuits where i am using two transistors in a single circuit so in that consideration we have different values for both of them okay let's calculate the another parameter that is figure of merit the figure of merit is nothing but how much power dissipated by one transistor divided by how much power i'm getting at the output side so all the values i have got in the form of vcc and rl right so i'll just calculate this ratio and that is coming out to be two okay that is the ideal condition when i'm talking about the maximum swing okay so all these values i'm getting in the ideal condition in the numerical that can be different in the practical scenario that can be different so i can say that this transistor dissipates maximum amount of ac power okay so let's move about the final point of the discussion in this particular video that is from this particular class a power amplifier which things are advantageous and which things are limitation kind of thing or disadvantageous kind of thing from where we have to improve the another power amplifier so first look at the advantages as we have seen that fixed bias circuit right it's a fixed bias circuit and i can say that it's a simple circuit right then second is conduction angle is 360 degree as conduction angle is 360 degree i'm getting the full swing right so i am not losing any kind of input signal right which is coming from the input side okay don't get confused with the efficiency efficiency is in the regard with the dc power input dc power with output ac power okay it has nothing to do with how much input signal ac signal i am giving okay now let us discuss about the disadvantages from where we have to move towards the next part of power amplifier it has poor efficiency and that poor efficiency value maximum efficiency value we get in the form of ideal situation that is 25% so 25% i am getting as poor efficiency obviously 100% i have to reach right so towards 100% i have to reach so what i'll have to do we'll have to do some modification in my circuit right so once i do the modification that class a amplifier no longer as class a amplifier it has some different name so second different uh, second disadvantage let's say second disadvantage circuit requires regulated power supply now what do you mean by regulated power supply as we have done the voltage regulators in the another uh, subject that voltage regulator is nothing but the constant dc supply so it is not necessary that whatever dc supply i am giving that is regulated dc supply okay whatever input i am giving that is regulated dc supply okay so i have to have regulated dc supply otherwise if i am getting the pulsating dc supply right which is changing with its value but in the form of peak to peak 
which is near to its average value okay so if there are some pulsating nature at the dc supply then there is a requirement of the regulation otherwise what will happen otherwise noise will come into picture right so that noise is nothing but hum that is called as hum and that causes distortion in my complete circuit so that is nothing but the biggest disadvantage that class a amplifier is suffering now in the next video we will learn the class b power amplifier where we get rid of all this disadvantage and we will move towards the improved efficiency obviously we have to compromise with some other parameters that will be discussed in the next video so thank you so much for watching this particular video i hope you all have clear with all the fundamentals of class a amplifier obviously we will learn the numerical point of view of class a amplifier in further videos so thank you so much for watching this particular video subscribe this particular channel of edc with ikeda videos thank you so much